The Fellowship of Guelph Saga continues with Mike of the Shriners challenging the Big Blue Orc to a duel of insults. Mike poked the obese orc's stomach by calling him out on the new rules of the game change and his intent to sprawl into the green belt. The Big Blue Orc chuckled it off with his property developer friends in the background and dogpiled on the smack talk, insults, and mud throwing. Meanwhile, Rodrigo of Gawler tried to build an e-scooter program to help him escape the northern frozen forest. But he also had to battle with the trolls on ice who wanted to steal his ride. Who will win the duel of insults and can Rodrigo of Gawler escape the frozen forest safely on an e-scooter? At Queen Lizard's Park in the depths of the swamps of Toronto, Mike of the Shriners attempted to call out the Big Blue Orc for the lack of affordable housing legislation. Instead of addressing the topic at hand, the Big Blue Orc improvised a reply. His speechwriters didn't have a scripted answer prepared since he didn't start his reply with my friends, so he went off script and hurled insults back at Shriner. Accusing him of all talk and no action, the Big Blue Orc mocked Shriner for not being an orcish property developer. There's 444 municipalities in this entire province. Guess who has the lowest housing starts? It's his riding of Guelph. The Big Blue Orc gawked at Shriner. But Mike didn't catch the compliment for not being an orc and he clapped back, I don't vote for legislation that doesn't work. That's just kind of how I roll over here. The, munis the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing got excited at the mention of a big roll from the hippie-infested Shire, so the Speaker of the House had to stop the smack talk before the conversation got derailed when Shriner changes the subject to climate change, like he always does. Back at the Council of Elders' Chambers, Carly of Classen and the Elder Elves were dealing with the looming invasion of the property developer orcs. They had to act quickly before another 20-plus story Tower of Sauron proposal was tabled. Carly could lose her elf class and the Elder Elves' beautiful hair could start falling out if they're forced to approve 20-plus story Tower of Sauron's downtown as creatures of the province. The first financial barrier was dealing with Bill 23, which reduced the ability of the corporation of the Shire to collect development charges and other fees from some new builds. The Sunshine Listers spent several weeks working from home to estimate this loss at more than $1 million annually. But that didn't stop Carly of Classen and the Elder Elves from keeping their commitment to the rule of the ward as they approved new bylaws to expand low-density residences into medium-level buildings without the need for any Tower of Saurons. Splitting the gray hairs between the Elder Elves, the Council of Elders approved a bylaw to allow basement apartments to have three bedrooms, up from two bedrooms, as well as low-density properties are now allowed to have two accessory units in addition to the main residence. The extra accessory building policy directly benefited Rodrigo of Gawler as a low-level orcish landlord with his backyard shack. But unfortunately, the news hasn't reached him yet. Meanwhile, inside Bruce the Bold's wooden shack in the northern frozen forest, Rodrigo of Gawler recovered from the cold. His feet had finally melted and regained their color thanks to Bruce's experience with tending to frostbite. Rodrigo thought about another attempt at escaping the frozen forest, but without his Black Rock spellbook, he couldn't conjure up any unique ideas. He had to instead rely on his basic copycat skills as a low-level orc. As someone who is currently homeless in the forest with a dead cell phone, Rodrigo couldn't search the internet with control C and V tabs open to solve his problems. But that's when he recalled what he heard from a traveling salesman in a blue suit pitching e-scooters at a free lunch one day in Kitchener. The blue suit joked that the technology was so simple that you could strap a battery to a plank of wood to make the e-scooter work. 
Rodrigo ran out the door with the idea as Bruce reluctantly shouted, No, you don't know the way. Rodrigo of Galler rummaged through the trash pile of bikes and boards behind Bruce's wooden house. He found an old lawnmower battery, some wheels from a broken bike, and then ripped wooden boards off of Bruce's roof. Four hours later, Rodrigo had a homemade e-scooter that would make Link jealous in a new Breath of the Wild game. He started the engine, gained some traction, and headed off into the blizzard with a derpy grin on his face. At a steady pace, Rodrigo scooted through the forest, dodging trees by barely seeing through the snow. But Rodrigo of Galler wasn't traveling alone. The noise from him scooting over the snow was noticed by the nearby trolls on ice who started tailing him. The trolls on ice are no one to be messed with as they commit most of the crimes in the Shire, such as breaking into cars, stealing bikes, and ripping out home grow from people's backyards. Two trolls were chasing Rodrigo of Galler as they huffed the snowy air with their giant noses. With each breath, the snow empowered them like white liquor as the hits boosted them up to Rodrigo, causing him to crash his e-scooter into the ground with a loud crack. Realizing he was on a sheet of ice, Rodrigo scurried away from the crashed e-scooter as the trolls on ice surrounded it. Before the trolls could find Rodrigo in the blizzard, there was another giant crack as he watched the e-scooter fall through the ice, taking the trolls with it. Rodrigo lay on the ground, relieved in the silent chill of the air. He passes out. An hour later, Rodrigo of Galler regains consciousness from being dragged in a sled back to the wooden house by Bruce. He overhears him say, you might be right, Sam. He might never learn the way home. Can Carly of Classen and the Elder Owls continue to follow the rule of the ward? Will Rodrigo of Galler ever find his way home? Stay tuned here to see.